but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you guys are doing great. We are on 1 Samuel chapter 6. All right, so I know we just had the weekend. Hope you guys are, you know, you did not slack. You kept up with doing your devotions, whether that be catching up where you failed or reviewing things we've read or maybe reading something new. That's great. I hope you wrote it down. I hope you guys uh, are telling people about what it is you're reading and getting out of God's word. Uh, but today we're picking right back up in 1 Samuel chapter 6. Uh, if you recall, we just got done with the whole chapter with Dagon and keeping the stump a stump and just kind of the overview of the chapter. Uh, now the Philistines, like they've come to the conclusion of the last chapter, they're gathered together. They're saying, all right, what, what can we do about this ark? All right, how do we get rid of this thing? Because it's causing us nothing but trouble. And so they finally come to the conclusion, all right, we need to send back to the Israelites. But how do we know if we send it back that God will take away these plagues, that he'll take away the mice, that he'll take away the emeralds, that uh, he'll take away this plague from us. And they say, all right, here's the best thing we can think of. Uh, let's put it on a cart. Now, that's very important. Remember that the Philistines moved the ark around by putting it on a cart. All right, that's not how the Israelites did it. They usually had the, 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 uh, the Levi priest would move it around uh, on their shoulders with some staves. And so that's just important to note. Really not until 2 Samuel. Some of you guys may be familiar with what I'm alluding to. But they put it on a cart. And they had the cart was being led or pulled by two cows. Now what was interesting was that these cows were not being uh, led by any person. All right, This was an unmanned cart. It was simply the ark, a cart, and two cows. All right, Female cows that they send out uh, down the road. And what they were hoping to see was, all right, it would be natural for these cows to seek out their calves. They would seek out their, their babies, all right? So they locked up the calves in their own separate area, all right? And if the cows did not go down the road, but rather went and tried to seek out their calves, uh, which they could be prone to do since no man was actually leading this cart, then they would know, all right, this isn't of God. Uh, we're stuck with the ark. We have no solution. What, what can we do next? But if they saw that the cows ignored their calves and just continued down the road towards Israel, then they would uh, surmise that, okay, this is of God. God's leading them away, and hopefully he will take away the plagues as well. And just to kind of sweeten the deal, so to speak, they also throw in a, a trespass offering into the ark, all right? Golden images that represent the uh, plagues and stuff that God allowed to befall the Philistines uh, during this time. So they send it. The ark's going down the road, and much probably to their, uh, their to their joy, the ark actually goes down the road. The cows ignore their calves, and they go down towards uh, Israel, and they eventually get to uh, the land of Beth Shemesh. All right. In fact, it, it, it settles in the field of Joshua of Beth. Ah, I'm going to mess this up, guys. I'm sorry. Beth Shemesh. All right. And the people, the Israelites, seeing this, they rejoice. They call the, the Levites to come in. The ark of the covenant's back. And the Philistines, they're like, all right, praise whoever their God they're worshiping at the time. If it's still Dagon, I don't know why, because obviously we saw last chapter uh, that Dagon was a pretty useless and powerful God. But they were probably thankful that they didn't have to deal with this anymore. And before I, I go past it, if you guys read the chapter, which I hope you did, uh, I think it's interesting to note that the Philistines, uh, in debating or in deliberating, all right, how do we get rid of this ark? Uh, that they brought up the fact that, hey guys, let's not be like the Egyptians, all right? God, the God of Israel, I mean, Egypt was a strong nation and God, he worked wonders there. Wonders being he, he brought these awful plagues upon them. Let's not be like the Egyptians, guys, and just continue to be hard in our hearts and kind of stuck in our ways and just allow God to continue to uh, rain down plague after plague upon us. All right, let's get, let's take care of this right now. I just think it's interesting that the Philistines who are worshiping uh, false gods are learning lessons from the, how God has worked in the past. Something the Israelites seem to fail to do oftentimes, especially in the book of Judges. Even now here at the beginning of 1 Samuel, uh, the Philistines, uh, not the Philistines, the Israelites often forget how God worked in their lives. And so it's just an interesting note that the Philistines are actually learning from the past mistakes and how God dealt with with the enemies of Israel in the past. 
So the ark gets to Beth Shemesh, and it's in the land of, uh, in the field of Joshua. Not a significant Joshua, you know, just not like the ones we know in the earlier parts of the Bible. But the people of Beth Shemesh, they themselves also get curious about, all right, what's inside the ark? So they actually look in it, and this was something that they were not supposed to do. Only the priests, the Levites, were supposed to handle the ark. Only the high priest was the one that was able to put contents in and out of the ark. So this was a very disrespectful thing they were not just doing to the ark, but doing to God. And God smote uh, many of the people in Beth Shemesh that day. And they learned really quickly, all right, uh, we do not trifle with God. So if there's any one main thing I think we can get out of today's lesson or today's uh, chapter, it's a simple thing of like, you know, it does not pay to trifle with God. If we look at everything that's happened from the beginning of 1 Samuel right up into now, Eli not taking, not reprimanding or punishing his sons because of their sins against God has died. Hophni and Phinehas who put their trust in the Ark of the Covenant instead of the God of the Ark have died. The Philistines who treated the Ark of the Covenant a symbol of God's presence as if it was just one of their other gods have now been uh, uh, faced a great plagues and slaughter. And now the people of Beth Shemesh who um, flippantly treat the Ark of the Covenant as a simple thing and they want to look inside it knowing it's something they're not supposed to do, they suffer a great slaughter as well. Guys, it does not pay uh, to trifle with God. All right, They had a beginning where they were rejoicing to see the Ark of the Covenant Guys, it's important for us to honor and respect God uh, to the best of our ability. He's, des he's deserving of that. Uh, we, we shouldn't treat him like uh, any other thing in our life. He is holy. He is majestic. He is, he is above all. All right? and, and when I say it does not pay to trifle with God, don't think you can bargain with him. Don't think you can uh, treat him like one of the little gods you may allow to come up into your life uh, from time to time. He is great. All right. When you sin against him, you know, humbly go before him, repent of that sin, confess it and ask forgiveness when uh, you're seeking his will. All right. Empty you of yourself and realize, all right, God, your ways are above my ways. All right. Don't try to bargain. Don't try to get uh, things for yourself. Understand it's all or nothing. It's all for God's glory and none of it for mine. He must increase and I must decrease. And that's it for today, guys. That's uh, today's chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 6. Uh, hope you guys start your, your week off right in just getting into God's Word. Like I always say, tell somebody what you read today in God's Word, your accountability partner, uh, your parents, whoever it may be. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless.